This psoas stretch has become one of my favorites, one of my go-to poses. There's been a bit of stress going on in my life recently, so I try to practice this pose every day. For this one, we're going to need a mat, a wall, a strap, and a block. You're going to want your mat set up against the wall and have your block and strap nearby. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. Come down onto your back. Have your block and your strap nearby. I'm going to lie down with the feet against the wall, knees just a little bit bent. Your block goes underneath your bum. And then from here, straighten your legs. We want the soles of the feet to be against the wall with our heels down on the ground. And then we want, the, your, we want your body to be comfortable. We don't want to have a lot of compression or gripping in the lower back, so you may have to readjust your block. And some of you are more sensitive than others. You may want to put a, a blanket on top of your, uh, a blanket or a towel on top of your block. We're trying to have the soles of the feet right against the wall, heels on the ground. You just start to breathe. Slow and steady breaths. In and out through the nose. Each inhale, filling the lungs and the diaphragm so chest and belly expand with the inhales. And contract with the exhales. Try to have the toes pointing up push evenly from the big toe to the pinky toe side of the foot. Those of us that are high arched or flat footed, you may roll a little bit from one side to the other. Keep the feet even. You can feel that nice stretch through the belly, maybe into the quads, the front of the thighs. Feel that psoas just unwinding. We know our psoas is our fight or flight muscle, so if this is gripping, your whole body or mind is in a state of gripping. You just want to release that. Keep pushing your left foot against the wall. Pull your right knee in. Now you could hold onto the back of the thigh or the front of the shin. Don't let the shoulders come off the ground though. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Keep breathing. Now the stretch is a lot more on the left side. If you can't hold on to the leg, just drawing the knee in is fine. We want to make sure though that the knee is not going out to the side with the foot splaying in. Try to keep the foot, the knee, and the hip <coughs> all lined up. Let's take your strap and hook it around the foot. Now this might honestly be a the hardest part of the whole thing, trying to lasso that foot. Take hold of the leg, reach the leg up towards the sky. We're trying to draw the foot towards our head while we push this left foot against the wall, not rolling to one side or the other, while we pull this right hip towards the wall as well. Now, if we pull this leg too much towards our head, or if we're really tight, in the back of the leg, then we're only going to feel this in the right hamstring or calf, the back of the right leg. And that's not a bad thing, but it's not what we're trying for. So if you need to, let the foot go a little bit more towards the wall. We're trying to actually stretch into the left psoas, so the left side of the belly, and or the front of the left quad. Breathe. Keep pushing the left foot against the wall. Almost physically feel that tension in the body. We could stay here for a moment, but for us, we're going to bend this right knee, take the strap off, and bring the right foot down onto the ground. And the left knee, both feet are on the ground. Notice the difference in the soles. It's 
bring the right foot onto the wall. And what will be interesting for some of you is that the wall will have moved closer or further away from your body. It hasn't really, but we use our bodies differently, or the sides of our bodies differently, so one side becomes a little bit longer, one side becomes a little bit tighter. So readjust if you need to, and then draw the left knee in towards the chest. We're still pulling the knee in, we're still pulling the left hip forward towards the wall, and we're trying to keep that foot, knee, and hip all in line with each other. So we don't want them splaying to one side or the other. Relax the shoulders. Keep breathing, belly and chest, so you can feel the rise of the belly and the fall of the belly with each breath. Let's hook the strap around the foot. Trying to stretch into the psoas, not the hamstring and the calf, the right the uh, left leg. So if you need to, let the foot go a little bit more towards the wall. If it needs to bend, it needs to bend, that's fine. Pull the left hip towards the wall, push the right foot against the wall. Keep the shoulders relaxed. switch legs automatically and wait a moment or two so that your body just has a chance to settle. And both knees. Lift the bum and slide that block out from underneath you as your bum comes down to the ground. You could stretch the arms and legs long. Be careful that wall is pretty close. Hug the knees in towards the chest, whatever feels best. Notice how much quieter the mind is, notice how much more relaxed the entire body is. So, this is why I practice this pose every day. For the yogis out there, I also like to practice this pose every day because every, every class that I take, if I practice this before I take the class, Everything goes better. My forward folds go better. My back bends, my quads, my hamstrings, everything is impacted by the psoas. If the psoas is tight, it can throw the hips or the pelvis or the knees or the spine, the, the shoulder blades. The shoulders can throw everything off. It makes everything a little bit tighter. So by relaxing the psoas, I relax my entire body. So for that reason, great pose to start every class with and every day with. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, see you soon.